Hey, what's up guys? It's Yang Bang, and I'm here to show you guys a comparative video of my top three VR games. That being Blade and Sorcery, Hellsplit Arena, and Tales of Glory. For those of you that have been a part of my channel, you guys know I cover those games pretty extensively. They're my favorite single player combat based games. I wanted to make this video because I've ran into plenty of discussions about which of these VR games is the best, which one provides the most authentic feel or the best immersion or the, the combat experience in general. So as a veteran player of all three of these games, I figured let's make a video so you guys can see just some particular elements from all three games and compare them to one another. Now I do gotta say that all three of these games are still in early access, which is a good thing because there's a ton of more development on its way. Also, all three of these games do have particular areas of expertise that further define what kind of game they are, but all in general, they are combat VR games, so that's the common ground that we'll compare them on. So today I have five categories that I'm going to be comparing for you guys. For category one, we're going to take a look at the base weapon selection of the games and a close visual inspection on weapon graphics. Category two, we're going to look at the weapon's responsiveness to the player's inputs in game. For category three, we're going to test the weapons in game for any general exploitive techniques. Category four, we're going to test weapons in game for functionality with half sorting and pommel strike techniques. And lastly, category five, archery in game. Now, I do have to say that Hellsplit Arena doesn't have any archery elements in it yet. I think the devs said they would, but for now, we'll have to leave that one out on this category. In our first category of base weapon selection, the game with the most amount of weapons to choose from is Tales of Glory, with over 40 different weapon options. TOG's weapons range from daggers, swords, axes, maces, spears, and even a few exotics and unlockables in game. Following after TOG is Hellsplit Arena with just under 30 weapons. Hellsplit's weapon selection is grouped in three categories, that being swords, axes, and maces. Lastly is Blade and Sorcery with just over 20 weapons. And I'll have to comment that Blade and Sorcery is the only game with mod support so additionally, it has probably hundreds of different weapons online for download. Now looking at the weapons from a graphical point of view, we'll have to consider what engine the games are all running on. Blade and Sorcery and Tales of Glory are both running on Unity, while Hellsplit Arena is on Unreal Engine. With that, Hellsplit has much better visuals on their weapons than the other games, from just the simple fact that the game renders the weapons in a better graphical level. Blade and Sorcery would come in at second, with its very clean weapon models. Each weapon looks tailored specifically for the game and looks really near to life in design. Tales of Glory, though it sports more weapon options than the other games, some of the weapons can look a little clunky and slightly off proportion. Category 2, Weapon Responsiveness. I'll start with Tales of Glory. Its weapons have preset grip points on handles for one-handed weapons and just on the hilts for two-handed weapons. This means that your hands will automatically snap to the hilt when you grab a weapon. This makes weapons behave consistently, but at the sacrifice of certain flexibilities. It's not entirely a bad system, it's just that if you wanted to choke up on the grip for more control over additional reach, it's not a possibility. Unless it's specifically a two-handed weapon, then your hands have a bit more degree of freedom. Two-handed weapons still have preset grips on the hilt, but you can grip the sword by the blade for a half-sorting stance. When it comes to swinging the weapons, depending on its weight location, they swing pretty well, very run-of-the-mill with VR weight physics in mind, top-heavy things will lag behind a bit, and heavier weapons in general will slightly be unwieldy compared to lighter weapons. Where Tales of Glory faces the most criticism for me is something that my sister once told me. There is weight physics in game that shows strength, but when it comes to clashing weapons with the AI, they act like they have muscular arm noodles. There isn't much in push and pulling weapons as they slip about each other and on the AI, but then require a realistic weight lag in real time to swing appropriately. 
Next is Blade and Sorcery. Opposite to how Tales of Glory has set grip placements on weapons, Blade and Sorcery has almost free control of where you can hold a weapon. Most weapons besides daggers can have your hands placed anywhere. Grip placements have a coated surface area that allows hands to freely slide to your desired hand placement. At default settings, Blade and Sorcery has a weight lag system for their weapons, so heavier weapons will swing with the artificial lag and lighter ones won't. With the ability to position your hands wherever you like, this greatly can change how the weapons will swing in-game, such as holding an axe higher up on the grip will give you better control, but at the cost of reach. But the lag system is highly customizable with the in-game setting variables, so honestly you can tweak the system to your heart's content. Make weapons feel really heavy and laggy if you like, or lighter than holding a TV remote. Swinging weapons in Hellsplit Arena is somewhat close to the same as the other games as well, where heavier versus lighter weapons will swing differently, but there is one completely different element that differs from the other two games. Hellsplit has a velocity threshold for weapons to interact with the world. You'll notice as I swing, there is a trailing decal that will show up. This is to signify the strength of my swing. If I hit an AI without enough force to make the decal, the hit will most likely do very minimal damage, if any. At best, it may block or just interrupt an AI's action. This is an interesting concept, as it forces players to really commit to an attack, versus being able to cheese the game with short choppy slashes. Not saying that it wouldn't work, but it could cost you more trouble than success in the end. Going from that, here's Category 3, with demonstrating those short choppy slashes in Hellsplit. So to a certain degree of success, it will work, but it's very far from an ideal strategy. These choppy slashes work okay when the AI doesn't have anything to protect themselves with, like armor. So chopping straight VR flesh really allows for anything to work. But to keep in mind, some weapons have different calculated weights, so those choppy slashes aren't always a possibility to do. Picking up Tales of Glory again, like I was saying before, the weapons sometimes don't really have a push or pull. As long as the weapon is hitting the AI, it's gonna do some damage. So it's like that muscular noodle analogy I was saying. This game allows you to flail away to some success, but the AI also gets the same rules. Expect plenty of return wax if you attack with poor defense in mind. The choppy slashes can also facilitate the AI's weapons to be guided right into you. In Blade and Sorcery, the short choppy slashes is something that can be very abused. It's not from the game's physics though, it's from the AI's behavior when they are hit. The AI have a set of animations that they will perform when they are interacted with. So by abusing those quick choppy slashes, you can animation stunlock them and chop away. This works on various parts of the AI body and with many of the weapon options. The latest update of armor on the AI does prevent this to work out, but not every part of the body has armor, so this technique can still be abused. Category 4 half sorting and pommel striking. In Blade and Sorcery, half sorting is available, but not very well implemented yet. It's functional and enjoyable in its current state, but lacks a strong integration. When you go to grip the blade of your sword, your hand doesn't really grip it like it's a grip, but your hand just pinches the weapon to where your hand is placed on it. In some way it's nice, but would be better if players could just grip it like a fully implemented grip surface. The utility of it though, using it to be a better guide for the sword tip to enemies, does work okay. But since the blade grip is more of a pinch, it can make guiding the sword move awkwardly in game. But for sure, it just takes some time to practice. This technique is best used on the new armored AI, with their weak points being their exposed faces in the armor. Also from the pinch grip, swords can be held in the Mordhaud grip, but again, from the grip, it's not very well implemented yet. Pommel striking can feel a little off at times too, with some weapons having better pommel damagers than others, making it not always consistent. The weaker ones won't really interact with the AI, whilst others will moderately damage enemies. But the most disappointing thing is that most pommel strikes are almost nulled by the armor, 
which is what armor is supposed to do, but when the AI has zero notice of the pummel strikes, it can break immersion. In Tales of Glory, stabs are very powerful on dispatching enemies, so half-sorting two-handed swords allows you to really stick it to the AI. The only downside is that the weapon selection for half-sorting is limited to just the two-handed weapons. It would be fun to be able to half-sort all the swords though. The half-sorting gripping in Tales of Glory is completely free for the player to decide where and how to place their hands. This provides the versatility of doing an overhanded grip or an underhanded grip, high or low, along the blade. One shortcoming of Tales of Glory though is that swords are unfortunately not able to be moored out gripped. But hand grips on the blade function just as well as a handle grip, so the half sorting does feel fantastic. On pommel striking, the pommel hits hard like it should. It's a solid piece of steel that you're using to kill with and it does the job. Even on enemies with helmets, you can feel that your pommel strike is being delivered with full effect. It was a little hard to land body strikes with the pommel, but it really just promoted me to do strikes to the head, which was the more ideal target anyways. The half sorting in Hellsplit also gives players the freedom to freely grip their sword anywhere they see fit. This offers again great control and versatility. And unlike Tales of Glory, you can freely grip just the blade for a well facilitated Morhout grip too. Though again, the game can get finicky and not work with certain blades at certain times, causing weird glitches to possibly occur. The half sorting isn't just a nice feature though in game, it's actually quite practical because many of the harder enemies that you'll face are equipped with a good amount of armor. The half sorting is great at guiding the tip of your sword right into the openings of your opponents. The pommel striking in Hellsplit is the best of the games, I gotta say. The delivery of the weight and damage effect is spot on. Hitting an enemy clean in the face, even with the helmet, will get them rocked if not knocked out. Hitting them in the gut of the ribs and you'll see them topple over to the floor. Hellsplit does a great job too at calculating your hits to reflect just how well you hit your opponents. The last category we have is archery, and like I said earlier, Hellsplit Arena does not have this function in game. I believe the devs talked about adding archer enemies in game at some time, but I'm not 100% positive that that would be for the players as well. So we'll jump into Blade and Sorcery's archery. There is currently only one bow and one type of arrow to use. The arrows come in an equipable quiver that contains 12 arrows and fits onto one of your back inventory slots. I've had tons of gameplay with the archery feature in Blade and Sorcery, and I can say from that experience, it's pretty awesome, but can use some fine tuning. There is an offset for the arrows to fly a little too much to the left. Through time I found a sweet spot to aim at, but it comes with knowing I have to aim a little heavy on the right side of the target to hit center. One other thing that I hope is addressed with the archery is the lethality of the arrows. Archery is a very deadly tool to use, but many times the arrows just don't dig in as well as they should. Most times they'll pop right out of the enemies after contact, if not immediately bouncing off their bodies. For the AI to use the bow and arrows, it's almost a comedy. It is still quite unnerving when you're in the sights of an archer, but only because you'll never know if an arrow will fly and hit you, or fly 10 yards away past you. There isn't much consistency with their aim, it feels like it's completely random at times. But there have been a few cases when an AI has surprised me with successive shots that landed on me, but those experiences are more rare than they are common. When it comes to the archery in Tales of Glory, archery for the player is slightly better. Most times where I aim is where I'll hit. The one thing that's different is arrows in Tales of Glory drop much faster so there's a lot of elevation aiming involved, and also your quiver of arrows is unlimited. But as far as flight goes, laterally the arrows fly pretty straight. For Tales of Glory's AI with bow and arrows, it's the opposite feeling from Blade and Sorcery. Seeing an archer with his sights on you is absolutely terrifying. The AI archers in Tales of Glory are damn near sharpshooters. If you are in range and in their sights, 
high chance you're getting shot unless you book feet or raise a shield. From the developer, he told me that there's two different aim modes for the AI. They have a direct line of sight firing and then a high arcing shot for distance. The far targeting mode is best situated for when army lines are formed on a battlefield, while the direct aiming is when a target is within a certain range. But if you can gauge the distance safely, the direct aim arrow's arc will fall short, roughly landing right about your feet. But still, a random arrow can still catch you in the leg, or in the face if you're unlucky. So with all those elements put together, I'll leave it to you guys to say which game looks like it has the best overall experience. And of course, the best way for you guys to get a hands-on opinion is jumping in the game yourself. But there are still so many aspects of these games to compare to. If there are specific elements that you guys like to see in further detail, please give a like on this video and comment your thoughts down below on what you would like to see. But that's it for me on this one guys, catch you in the next, peace out.